A point that Ajahn Suwa would make frequently was that we misunderstand things. We think that pain is our enemy, and craving is our friend. We've got it backwards. Pain is not the enemy. The enemy is the craving. And even though pain it may not be a pleasant person to be around, still we can learn many important things from pain. And so in that sense, it's our friend. But you have to understand it. And again, we have things backwards. We think we want to abandon pain. But the craving is something you want to abandon. The pain is something to be comprehended. This is one of the reasons why we get the mind in a concentration, so we can put it in a position where it can watch the pain and not feel threatened by it. And as you watch it, you learn about it. So focus on the breath. Get it really comfortable. Give the mind the energy it needs in order to watch the pain, to understand it. Sometimes if you start out at the beginning of the meditation, there's already pain in your body. This means focusing instead on another area where there's not so much pain, where things are more pleasant. They may seem just neutral to begin with. But you'll often find that these neutral areas of the body, if you sit with them for a while, give them a little space, let them relax a little bit, can actually become pleasant. And that sense of pleasure, sense of refreshment that comes from allowing the breath energy to flow well there, that strengthens you. Puts you in a much better mood. So when the time comes to look at the pain, you're ready for it. What are you looking for? Well, the first thing you want to notice the distinction between physical pain and mental pain. Because physical pain is not the problem. The problem is the mental pain we create, either around physical pain or around painful emotions. You want to learn to be able to make that distinction, because it makes all the difference in the world. Because when you finally get to the point where the mind is not pain, that doesn't mean physical pain is going to go away. It may st still be there just as much as it was before, but there's a sense of being disjoined from it. It's in its place. The mind is it's in its place. Your awareness is in its place. What you want to be able to do is to see how these things actually would normally be that way if it weren't for all the activity that we create to pull the pain into the mind. That's what you're going to be looking for. And a lot of that activity has to do with the perceptions we have around the pain. Number one being, of course, that the pain is our enemy, or two, that we want to get rid of it, break through it. or whatever perceptions you have, that the pain is permanent, that it's there, lodged in you, that it's not changing. You have to learn how to undo these perceptions. Because after all, it is perception that is the primary factor that fashions your mind. The Buddha identifies perception and feeling as the mental fabrications, i.e. the things that create your sense of well-being or not well-being in the mind. But it turns out perception is the really big one. And so you want to look for all the different labels that you have around the pain. Learn how to see it as impermanent coming and going, coming and going, and then even better, just going, 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 even though it will arise again. You want to focus on it's going away, going away, so that you don't feel like you're in the line of fire, that you're the victim of the pain. That's one perception that's helpful. Another is to look for 
what subconscious perceptions you have about the shape of the pain or your fear that if you don't clamp down on the pain, it's going to spread. You want to bring those perceptions up to the surface, and one of the ways of doing that is to challenge them. To tell yourself, okay, if I step back from the pain, allow the pain to go all over the body if that's what it wants. And something in your mind is going to scream, say, no, 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 you can't do that. Okay, you found that subconscious perception. You can remind yourself that many times when you clamp down on the pain, it makes it worse. Your attempt to control it makes it worse. So you're here just to watch it going away, going away, going away, so that you can notice what other perceptions are going on in the mind. You'll learn how to detect the level of pain in the mind itself and see how it, too, comes and goes and rises and falls. You want to look for the risings and fallings, because those are the things that alert you. Okay, something just changed. Something important just changed. Something that made the pain more unbearable. When we talk about mental feelings, it's not necessarily emotions. Sometimes it's just a thought in the mind. I can't take this. That thought in and of itself places a huge burden on the mind. Or the simple thought, I've been sitting here with this pain for half an hour, how much longer is it going to have to last? There will be a little piercing of grief that goes with that, or sense again that I can't take this. If you see those thoughts arising, remind yourself that the pain that you've been sitting through for the past half hour, that's not there anymore. And as for the pain in the future, that's not here either. All you've got is just the pain right here, right here, right here. Any reference to time, you want to put that aside. Any reference to space, you want to put it aside. The idea of the pain is in this part of the body, the pain's in that part of the body. Drop that. Somehow we think that by locating the pain we're working towards a solution. It's not the case. By trying to pin it down in this way, you're interfering with the flow of energy in the body and, again, creating a perception that digs away at the mind. And then you can ask yourself exactly what here is painful? What is it that's actually wearing down the mind? What about the pain is so hard to bear? Simply your ability to question things in this way gives you a little bit of distance from them. Because it's simply sitting in our old habits of thinking without questioning. That, allowed, that places us in a position of being a burden to ourselves. Our thoughts become burdens. We become victims. If the pain moves around, you learn how to move around, too, in the sense that you don't sit on one perception all the time. And John Mahabua talks about asking yourself, okay, where is the most intense spot of the pain right now? And as you chase it around for a while, you begin to realize that the idea of a most intense spot is in itself something that pains the mind. So you can drop that. Because you see the spot moving around, and first you think, oh, it's over here. You go riding over there. Nope, it's not there anymore. It's over someplace else. And that leads you to question things. Exactly where is the point of being burdened? What is burdening the mind right now? And then as you ask these questions, it opens the issue up. Again and again and again, the teachings focus on how our assumptions are creating problems. You know, our assumptions of self, our assumptions of this is our self and that outside that little boundary line, that's not self. We learn to look at that boundary, and after a while, I begin to realize that boundary keeps moving around. That perception allows you to understand a lot more about this process of what the Buddha calls I-making and my-making. 
It's not what you thought. And the same with the pain. Sometimes it's just an intense sensation, and it's our perception that makes it painful. You see this with the feelings of rapture. Rapture is something that affects both the body and the mind. And sometimes the sensations in the body get extremely full, so full that you feel like you're drowning. And then a, when that perception comes in that you're drowning, that becomes unpleasant, something you've got to run away from. But if you give it some space and say this sense of fullness can actually be pleasant. Search out which part of your mind or your awareness feels threatened by it and question it. Turn things around. Or you can ask yourself, say there's a pain in one part of the body or a blockage in one part of the body. Which side do you think you're on? Are you on the upper side or on the lower side? Many of us tend to focus our sense of where we are in the body up in the head, and the head is looking at the body as a distant thing, or we're identified with some sensation in the chest or on the heart. We'll learn how to question that. It's these unex unexamined assumptions that really weigh the mind down. So you want to be able to catch them, question them, pull back from them, and then you're no longer in the line of fire. So these are some of the things you can learn about the mind from associating with the pain and learning how to question your craving and question your assumption and cravings and assumptions. And in digging these things up and questioning them, you find that you can release yourself from their power. That's how insight happens. There's no one technique that will guarantee insights. Having one technique is like those big guns they had in Singapore prior to World War II. The British were sure the Japanese were going to come by the ocean, and so they pointed all their guns out toward the ocean, set them in cement. Then, of course, the Japanese came down the Malay Peninsula from behind the guns. The guns couldn't be turned around, and that was it. If you just hope that one technique of noting or one technique of scanning or whatever is going to do the work for you, your defilement's going to laugh at you. because they can sneak around behind the technique and take over the technique for their own, own purposes. You want your assumptions to be hard for the defilements to pin down. So teach the mind how to question its assumptions. What comes to a new insight, learn how to question that too. You'll be a moving target, hard to hit. And you learn how to see a lot of things that you took as solid and set as simply being the results of activities that you've been doing repeatedly again and again and again. When you learn how to stop doing the activity, things that seem so solid will begin to dissolve away. And that's how we get to know that third noble truth, the cessation of suffering, the cessation of stress, which you don't have to comprehend beforehand. Just know that it's really good, and it is something that you can realize. Your duty is to comprehend stress, abandon the cause by developing the path. And the cessation will happen on its own. That's when you realize it. So 
is by hanging around this issue of pain, particularly the mental pain caused by craving ignorance. That's when you realize who your true friends are. <laughs>